Greetings, fam. I hope you all are having a great weekend. Today, we are watching a movie that has been on my list for a long time, like six, seven months long. And somebody recently reminded me to check it out. So here we are, because today we are watching The Last Dragon. No, 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 not the Disney movie, the karate movie set in Harlem back in the 80s. I have never seen this movie before, but just the plot synopsis makes it seem like an instant favorite of mine because it's basically Bruce Lee in Harlem. Yeah. How amazing does that sound? Well, we will find out because this is Red Eye Reviews. So this movie was a critical failure, but... Technically a box office success because it still made a net profit of about $23 million, but like everybody hated it at first. All the critics hated it. Most of the moviegoers didn't like it, but it was still technically a success. And now it has turned into a cult classic, which, you know, one of the reasons is on my channel. We start with an intro compilation of practicing our karate skills. Oh, shit, this guy's a double threat. Not only can he do karate, but he makes a point to show us that he can work chopsticks. That was apparently a thing that you could boast about in the 80s. So, this is Leroy, a.k.a. Bruce Leroy, which I think might be one of my favorite nicknames in any movie. And he kicks major ass. Look at this right here. It's so cool. This is completely practical. This apparently took like three, four hours on set of them just trying to get this right. But he karate chops an arrow in mid-flight. That's so cool. And it's a great way to start this badass movie. So he has officially graduated from his teachings and has decided to head out into the world of New York. Take this. It was Bruce Lee's. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Time, time out. Time out. Are you just handing out Bruce Lee memorabilia? Where does one sign up for such a handout? Put my name on the list. But he learns of another master because he wants to continue his teachings and his current master says like he's done everything he can. And the new guy he should go find is in Harlem and his name is some dumb guy. That <laughs> That's right. The next master's name is Master Some Dumb Guy. Which, that might be better than Bruce Leroy. I don't know. It's not a beyond the law, your Inside you. That's what I'm still thinking. Inside you. And the music is so good throughout this whole movie. All the music is really, really good. But we cut to Harlem, and all these locals are watching some old school Bruce Lee action. And this right here is like a dream of mine. These people genuinely love Bruce Lee. There's a whole theater, colorful characters all watching Bruce Lee. A couple people get so into it, they start dancing right in the middle of the aisle. And then the bad guy of our movie shows up. Am I the meanest? Am I the prettiest? This is Shredder. I mean, uh, the Shogun of Harlem. Shogun of Harlem. And he can fight anybody in the city. And he does so all the time, and he boasts about how good he is at fighting. But the only person who refuses to fight him is our man, Leroy, a.k.a. Bruce Leroy. That's the only guy that stands between show and total supremacy. And Bruce Leroy, at this point, is just straight up out of an anime show. He's eating popcorn with chopsticks. He's wearing that hat. Oh my god, this would make a hell of a TV show. But the Shogun tries to fight everybody in the theater. Why don't I sit down and what? I say, why don't you sit down and shut up? Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, uh, beefcake, uh, beefcake baby. Uh, I think you were a little more intimidating with the coat on. And just go ahead and go ahead and put that back on. But he does fight everybody. Leroy just bails. He's like, ah, I'm, not, I'm not a guy who fights. And then the Shogun vows that he will fight Leroy one day soon. 
We cut over to these kind of like henchmen-esque people. This girl wants to become the next big rock star of the club scene here. Uh, but her producer can't get her any good gigs because like she's okay, but she's not great. We also see her bodyguard is played by a young Mike star. Dude, where have you been? But we cut to the Seventh Heaven Club, the biggest and best club in Harlem. And its main attraction is this lady, Laura Charles, and she absolutely kills it. She's jamming so hard. It's so funky. Like, I'm not sure if she's dancing or, like, trying to cast a spell on me. But either way, I am for it. Also, fun fact, this Seventh Heaven set was so cool. One day, Diana Ross visited this set and asked if she could actually buy it out for her next tour through the United States. And it is a killer set. Like, it's so funky. But as Laura leaves the club, some guys attempt to kidnap her. And Bruce Leroy just so happens to be there, and he handles these punks. Yeah, he is dominant, and then he uh, disappears. But he does forget his little Bruce Lee trinket by mistake. And we, uh, we got ourselves a little love story, folks. Yeah, little uh, glass slipper of Harlem karate movie going on. We cut to Leroy teaching his karate class, and he's got tons of pupils, and all of them, like, have serious potential, but in true karate fashion, he only wants to show his skills when absolutely necessary. See, a school is for instructions in the martial arts. Come on, Leroy. Teach me something. Every time I see these guys, these outfits just, like, they look more and more ridiculous. I love it. Is this a cosplay? Are we doing this? But Shogun challenges him to a fight. He obviously refuses, keeping his mantra true and not fighting unless absolutely needed. You may not wish to fight me now, sucker, but you will. I'm going to see to that. And he does wind up getting embarrassed in front of his class. But we cut over to him and his family at dinner, and we learn his dad owns a pizza company. When I first started my business, people said I was weird. A black man with a pizza shop. Just direct to your pizza to Daddy Green's Pizza. Leroy does ask his brother to take him to the Seventh Heaventh Club to meet Laura as he believes she is the one who picked up his Bruce Lee amulet. But while he is waiting for her at the club, he sees her get kidnapped again. I don't know, Miss Charles. I only do what I'm told. You know, we try for perfect. perfect. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. He's been in the right place at the right time twice now. And our man Mike Starr makes a tactical error because when he kidnaps her, he drops the clipboard with his boss's name on it just in the street. But we see that Laura was kidnapped by that producer and he is trying to force her to put his girl on stage at the club. When she refuses this, they were about to rough her up, but Leroy steps in at the right time and starts kicking everybody's ass. And poor Mike Starr gets dominated by his own guy. Friendly fire, like he's out before the fight starts and he just lays there the rest of the time. Hot head needs cool water. <laughs> He does rescue the girl, and she says she does, in fact, have his amulet. That is a tongue twister. She says she does. Blah. So he drops her off at her apartment. She gives him the amulet. We got some, like, sexual tension going on, but we don't have time for it because Bruce Leroy is now equipped with his amulet, and he tries to meet the master of Harlem, a.k.a. some dumb guy. Like sucky wax. Again, another banger of a song, Sake Soup. But when he goes, they say the master is not home and to come back later. The master don't see nobody. Yeah, he don't see no one who don't know how to get down, baby. In the meantime, the Shogun of Harlem has shown up at the pizza shop and decides to wreck the place, trying to force Leroy into like a fight with him. 
<laughs> and it's all because of you. Everyone knows you're scared of it. What good is that kung fu job if you can't even use it? And yeah, this scene is sad. The little kid's killing it. It's emotional. But this little dude right here, stealing the goddamn show. Bro, you're like 15 years ahead of the times with that outfit, but I totally dig it. So, the failed producer guy wants to force his girl amongst the nightlife. But he can't do that until he gets Laura out of the way, because she, you know, doesn't want this to happen. But he can't get to Laura because Leroy keeps showing up in the right place in the right time. So he hires a bunch of miscellaneous henchmen. Give that man anything he wants. Give him a bone. What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. This, this is a dog man. He's real intense. I would not want to mess with him, and I would agree. Just give him whatever he asks for, because he's going to bite somebody. And on their quest for henchmen, they meet up with the Shogun of Harlem. Did you see that? The they just add these henchmen in every time we see them. It just gets more and more ridiculous. Like, look at this gong guy. He's so good. This is like, it's anime material through the roof. But the Shogun agrees to fight Leroy, like, with them, for them, you know. He, he just wants to fight Leroy. In the meantime, Leroy goes back to find Master Some Dumb Guy, and they finally tell him that Some Dumb Guy uh, does not exist. We made him up to sell more fortune cookies. Some Dumb Guy. And now we're the Some Dumb Guy, because we believed him. But Furious, he runs back to his old master and confronts him. Why have you done this to me? <laughs> Think, Leroy. And this, a true master would use this to hold up his pants. Not only was there no some dumb guy, but the Bruce Lee trinket was a goddamn belt buckle. If you will excuse me, my plane leaves shortly. You are going on a quest for knowledge? No, I'm going to visit my mother in Miami. Laura and Leroy's little brother happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. They both get kidnapped by that producer who has, like, officially lost his marbles. And for the last 20 minutes of the movie, we all absolutely lose our goddamn minds. And it gets so, so awesome. Because Leroy shows up to the club. The producer has gone full, like, Mr. Magatu. Leroy! He's full supervillain. He unleashes his army of minions on Leroy. And like, there are some really good looking bad guys in their ranks. They're so ridiculous. Like, look at, look at some of these guys. And then a point comes where he starts to lose, but all of his pupils show up and help him fight all the bad guys. <laughs> Oh, snap! This little kid is about to kick some ass. And he's got to be adorable while he does it. He's a double threat. We cut upstairs and the producer knows that he's outmatched, so he bails with Laura, but he leaves Leroy's brother by himself. Leroy's brother promptly dances his way out of his restraints and chases off after Laura. Leroy chases off after both of them, and he gets in a fight with the Shogun of Harlem. And now we have one of the coolest fights, like, ever. It's so cool. I haven't seen something this cool in a long time. He's literally glowing. There's ten minutes left in the movie, and we're introducing actual magic. It's like straight up out of Scott Pilgrim, and I love every single minute of it. But when Leroy is at his weakest, he learns his own valuable lesson. Who's the one and only mouth? I am. I am. Let me go, motherfucker. Let me go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Our boy goes full Super Saiyan. He kicks the Shogun's ass all over the factory. <laughs> The producer comes down. He attempts to shoot Leroy like a coward. Ah, 
and our man catches the bullet in his goddamn teeth. He's so cool. He rescues the girl, he ties up the bad guy, vanishes into the dark like he's Batman, and our movie is over. And it was insane. He got the cool ball. <laughs> he ain't no cool ball. He's my brother. I honestly can't believe I've never seen it before today, but it will definitely be a movie on my soon-to-watch-again list. So let's keep this funky party going and head on over to Red Eye Reacts. So one of my favorite parts about this movie is just the writing and these quick little comebacks. They're so good, so here are some of my favorites. People are afraid of oriental dudes. Give them a little move, a little stream, and lots of attitude. Get him, girls. Maybe you can get a rise out of this limp wimp. How about you? Stream bean Rick James looking food. Lord Charles. I would like to see her. I would like to see her. No way the queen is going to be looking at no walking fortune cookie. He just, ah, it's hot. He's sick. The boy's... All that yoga. You're nothing but a misguided midget asshole with dreams of ruin the world. Uh, is it Mr. Leroy here? Um, no, he's not here, but uh, how about something in a medium sized oriental? Leroy! You warmed up yet? That was everything. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to the channel. We are climbing, and I'm so excited. Um, like the video, hit the bell if you want to get reminded, leave some comments. If you've seen The Last Dragon, oh my god, welcome to the club. It's so good. We will see you next time, and until then, stay happy and stay healthy. Ah!